What's up guys? Today we're going to be reviewing this Winsor & Newton watercolor paper professional grade, 100% cotton. I'm going to show you three paintings across three different states and stick around to the end to find out if this paper is worth buying or if you should pass on it. Alright, first state, Wyoming. So I'm in uh, Vita Vu here in Wyoming and um, it's really beautiful. Like I've been trying to find something that I think I could paint and uh, I'm pretty sure that I can find something to paint. I'm also gonna be painting in the first for the first time with this Windsor & Newton 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is their professional grade. So uh, we're testing it out and we'll see how it handles, but I think I'm expecting it to be pretty good. It's also the rough grain texture, which is kind of like their heaviest texture. I'm kind of just interested how the paint will handle and I'm expecting it to do well, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to start by doing some gouache. I've got ivory black, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson permanent, yellow ochre, which I'm using for the first time in gouache, and titanium white. So I've done the most kind of basic sketch that I can possibly do of this scene here. And I'm gonna try and do a vertical painting. So I kind of like having all this kind of lead the eye in and I kind of want to move these clouds over, but I really love this. If that will stay there, we'll see. It'll probably shift quite a lot. And then I love this dead tree here. So we're gonna try and capture that, see what happens. So I started off this painting with some big, wet, juicy washes. And you can see right away that the paper just handled it absolutely beautifully. And it was really exciting to just see the paint soak into the paper like this. I'm sometimes used to cheaper paper that uh, where the paint will just sit on top, but it was so lovely to have this just sink into the paper. Um, I was kind of experimenting with kind of going in with bluish purple colors for the dark shadows and not just doing pure black. I really like how that turned out. And um, I tried to work in big, broad sections and then kind of slowly build it up to the detailed parts and work fast. As I was blocking this in, you can see that I'm kind of working semi-transparently, but then I'm able to go over the top of it. And I love that rough texture of the paper here because it was able to give me that impression of foliage as I dragged my brush across. I really enjoyed that. The climate was so dry and the sun was shining that my paint was drying on my palette, on my brush sometimes while I was painting. You can see here that easily I was able to re-wet this page, go in with another wet wash and uh, the paper just stood up so beautifully. Just coming in with a little bit more white gouache to uh, emphasize those beautiful clouds that we had that day. Man, it was gorgeous. The texture of the paper really helped when you're trying to get something like this uh, bark texture because you can do some dry brushing effects and get something that actually looks like bark just by dragging the brush across the page. And even here, this is a real stress test of being able to go back in and kind of scrub out a part to try and uh, soften those edges and it handled beautifully. This is my favorite part. No tearing either. I was really aggressive with this tape and paper held up just fine. Well, this painting turned out way better than expected. I love this paper. Um, I love just the textures I was able to get and the wet and wet technique. Being able to paint with uh, opacity and being able to paint um, in washes was really just super pleasant. Um, this paper held up. Uh, it's, it's really great. I really enjoyed it. Um, but all in all, this was an incredible experience. And um, even though we didn't go like hiking on the craziest trails, this was like a three minute hike from where we parked our car. Um, it's just a gorgeous, beautiful scene. And uh, I'm really happy to be here. So this was an awesome time. All right, if you guys are getting anything out of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Also, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions about this paper. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And let me know also, is there any other paper you'd like me to compare this to or any other art supplies you'd like me to try out? I'd love to try them out. All right.
Here's the next painting. This is the scene that uh, I decided to paint. These trees growing in this dry creek bed really caught my eye. Now, I'm going to go on about this texture again because that rough texture really gave a nice tooth to, uh, to draw on and uh, to get a suggestion of what I wanted to paint. I started by doing a giant wet wash again for the sky and trying to use my paint transparent. Now, while I was painting, these wasps came and were really attracted to the paint. This guy, uh, I think he wanted to do me some harm, I'm not sure, but uh, luckily came away unscathed. No permanent damage done. So I start with uh, big washes and you know, on a cheaper paper this just wouldn't hold up to those washes at all or it'd start painting. I'm able to layer paint on top of it, layer paint on top of that, layer after layer and the paper just could take everything I was throwing at, at it. Um, I almost was kind of treating this painting almost like I would do an oil painting where I go in with my darks and then come over the top with uh, highlights and this held up just so nicely. Here you can see how dry it is that my palette was drying on me and paint would almost dry on the on the brush even. But One thing that I just think is really beautiful is being able to suggest foliage instead of having to go in and paint every bush and shrub and blade of grass. and. The texture of that paper really lent itself to that, that you could kind of do all kinds of th things with the brush technique to suggest just different um, things. And even when I did want to draw in different blades of grass here, that the, the tooth of the paper really grabbed the paint and let me get really fine detail that I might not have been able to get otherwise. I was really happy with how this painting turned out. Really love that. Now this third painting was just a short trip into South Dakota and it just happened to be on the first day of Sturgis so that's why you'll see all of these motorcycles and hear these motorcycle sounds but we went to some place called The Needles where you got these really interesting rock formations and uh, I just had to stop and, uh, and try to paint some of them. So I kind of hiked up this little embankment here not too far from the road and did a conventional pencil sketch and this is the finished piece. Overall, I have really loved this paper. Um, I love the rough grain texture and the ability to suggest different textures and foliage instead of having to paint every blade of grass or leaf. I could go in there and use dry brushing techniques and use the texture of this paper perfectly for that. The fact that it's 100% cotton made it so absorbent to use very wet washes and to get very strong atmospheric perspective and atmospheric effects, as well as being able to re-wet it, to put layers of paint, to put other layers of washes on top of it. It seemed to just take everything I threw at it very well. I love the thickness of the paper, the fact that the paintings and the pages don't buckle uh, where I really applied a lot of paint um, or really show the fact that I painted on all, but it's very crisp, uh, perfect for framing. Um, I think definitely suitable if you're looking to sell art pieces or uh, hang them in a gallery. I would say compared to more budget brands of paper, um, either paper that doesn't have 100% cotton or just some more budget brands that claim to be 100% cotton, the fact that this paper totally absorbed the washes, it seemed like I could throw anything at it and it wasn't going to tear, it wasn't going to buckle. Um, I really, really loved how this turned out. So let's talk about price. Um, it could be the best paper in the world, but if it's a million dollars, it's not worth it, right? So I was able to get this watercolor block. It's seven by 10 inches with 20 sheets of paper, 100% cotton for $27 on Amazon. Now that price may change, but comparing that to Arches, the same grade of paper, 100% cotton, 20 sheets, Arches is running about $35 right now. And so I would say comparing this to the name brand of Arches, what you're getting for almost $10 cheaper, I think is an extremely high quality paper that you're really not 
uh, you're not going to regret buying and using this paper. I highly recommend it. Um, I haven't tried out the smooth grain and uh, the cold press. Um, I'd be willing to try that out. Let me know in the comments if you'd like for me to try that out. I would say the rough grain might not be as good if you're trying to do something extremely delicate like portraiture, but I think I really enjoyed the tooth of that paper for drawing on, for painting, and for being able to get more effects out of the paint. I liked it for plein air painting and for being able to have more suggestion and kind of impressionism in my painting. I love the grain of this paper. Ultimately, I would say for the price, the quality of this paper is a no-brainer. I would say definitely try it out, use it. Um, it's definitely usable for professional use. I would say if you're looking for something to practice on or sketch on um, and they're just going to be throwaway pieces, then maybe this isn't what you want to go for. I might use some mixed media paper for something like that. For, some, for paper that you want a finished piece on, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a higher quality paper for the price than this Windsor Newton paper. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist of other paintings I've done um, or this video here. Remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.